Let's talk about Yahya Sinwar. Yahya Sinwar uh, became the Politburo chief of uh, Hamas, w was already the uh, the leader of the military wing of Hamas, and is seen as the uh, person who was most responsible for, I don't want to use the term masterminding, because I feel like a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're being anti-Semitic or whatever the f um, What's a better word than that? Um, coordinating the October 7 attacks. So there's the raw footage of Yahya Sinwar's last moments. Uh, this doesn't actually show uh, any any blood or anything, but uh, Israel, weirdly enough, um, presented this, I think, uh, because they thought, like, look how sick this is. Like, we killed him. He died. He's a loser. But uh, the reality of the matter is that I think this will probably... I mean, I think this is like something that will backfire, considering that it completely contradicts a lot of the messaging surrounding uh, Yahya Sinwar and the way that he was presented to be like surrounded by 20 hostages that he's handcuffed to and that he was in a tunnel structure always like consistently hiding. And that's not the case at all. His arm is severed in the video. Yeah, his arm uh, was shot off, I believe, by like uh, our, the first artillery shell. Overall, the way that uh, the way that this played out is that they didn't even know that they actually ended up targeting and killing Yahya Sinwar. They thought that they were just targeting and killing random Palestinians. Basically, they see three people that they uh, that they think are suspicious. Those three people scatter. There's like a firefight. One of them runs into this building. The building is shelled, but. Um, I guess we'll we'll I'll give you more details on his background Last after year, we talk Yahya about like Sinwar the, the details surrounding the the uh, death of Yahya Sinwar. To the top of any notional Israeli target list, a former internal enforcer, a former prisoner in Israel since 2017, the head of Hamas in Gaza. Why would he be in the front lines though? Does Hamas lack men now? I think that that is one way to interpret the situation. And I'm yes, Hamas's uh, ranks have obviously uh, been diminished in the last 12 months of a genocide. But I think the other reason is that, um, the other reason why he was in the front lines is because one, all of Gaza is a front line. And two, at least in terms of how he's always operated, he he is not exactly, he's not exactly a shy person. Uh, there are a lot of instances, I think, like where he's openly uh, openly called for Israel to try and drone strike him as he like walked freely in the streets. But this is before October 7, I'm, I'm talking about. He wasn't similar to the usual Politburo uh, chiefs and the way that they are uh, and the way that they are presented to mainstream media, like other uh, Palestinian leadership that was oftentimes maybe even seen at odds uh, with the immediate interests of uh, Palestinians, that they are like wealthy, they live in Doha, they're they're not they're far removed from the consequences of like Israel's violent actions, even though they are making these decisions, right? He, on the other hand, was always uh, amongst the the population. Uh, I will, of course, bring up uh, Hind Hassan's interview with him, which I have literally uh, watched before. Hind Hassan says, this was my interview with Lama al Arian, documentary filmmaker, war reporter, Vice News and NPR. It's his last ever on-camera interview. Everyone told us he was hiding as it was just days after an assassination attempt during 11 days of Israeli bombardment in 2021. We found him walking down the street, so we stopped him and asked for an interview. He was not the leader of the al qassam brigades. For your information, that is Mohammed Daif. He was the political leader who wanted to be more involved militarily. Sorry. It is interesting, though, once again, um, we'll dive further into the background and into the mentality of Yahya Sinwar. I've read primarily Israeli uh, Israeli reporting on him. Like, that's the most access that I have because uh, he wrote a book. Uh, he wrote a book. He spent most of his, he spent a big chunk of his life, two decades in Israeli prison. His uh, primary response, his primary responsibility for Hamas was uh, to seek out collaborators. So like most of the people that he actually punished or killed were Palestinian before uh, before he went to Israeli prison. And in Israeli prison, he basically learned a lot about Israel. One thing that you hear about him, one thing that I've heard so consistently, both from David Remnick and many other people in Israel, is that they always say, Yahya Sinwar understood us, as in Israeli society, better than we could ever understand Palestinians. And these are not people who like him, okay? These are not like people who are pro Yahya Sinwar. <laughs> 
Born in southern Khan Yunus to Palestinian refugee parents, he was 25 at the time of the first Intifada, or uprising, in 1987. Yeah, he was born in 1962 to a refugee camp, by the way, a refugee camp that still very much exists, by the way, even though Israel basically destroyed it. Uh, that gives you a little bit of a better understanding of like the terms and conditions into to what the world that Yahya Sinwar came into. Recruited to the newly formed Hamas, quickly becoming its chief enforcer, punishing, killing Palestinians suspected of collaborating with Israel. In 1989, he was yeah. convicted by Israel for the abduction and killing of two Israeli soldiers and the murder of four Palestinians. He spent 22 years as an Israeli prisoner, even giving interviews in fluent Hebrew. <laughs> Studying Israeli society, media, politics, the better he had it to attack and undermine them. In 2011, he was one of more than a thousand Palestinian prisoners released in exchange for the captured Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit. Doctrinaire. It's interesting because he, while he was in Israeli prison, he was scheming to to figure out a way to do like a hostage negotiation already to to potentially like do a prison break, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And he was one of the primary parties in the negotiations process uh, he was a principal negotiator like he played a role in this uh, hostage swap that occurred with Gilad Shalit. long opposed to the oslo peace process with the aim of eradicating israel and reclaiming all of palestine he established himself as a chief strategist boosting ties with iran in 2015 he was defined by the u.s government as a specially designated global terrorist his seniority within Hamas was cemented in 2017 when he became its Gaza chief, changing the power balance in favor of its military wing. The same year, Hamas issued an updated charter suggesting it would accept an interim Palestinian state alongside Israel. Sinwar entering into what some saw as an unspoken arrangement with Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel allowing Qatari funding for Gaza in the hope of containing Hamas and maintaining the division between it and the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. But as October the 7th proved, and his speech nearly a year before it suggested, Sinwar was still planning a major attack. We will come to you, God willing, in a roaring flood. We will come to you with an endless number of rockets. We will with an Wait, where did it, when did he say this? 2017? We will come to you with an endless number of rockets. We will come to you in a flood of soldiers without limit. We will come to you with millions of our nation, tide after tide. With the Al-Aqsa flood, as he called last year's attack, killing 1,200 Israelis and capturing 200... Oh, 2022. It was two years ago. Okay. Sinwar dealt Israel a military a year humiliation before. and a deep psychological wound. But it also brought an unprecedented Israeli response, laying waste to Gaza, killing thousands of civilians and destroying much of Hamas's military capacity and now all of its top level leadership. The suspicious figure, the bloodstain and the shell to Building 42. New details about Sinwar's assassination. Israel confirms the IDF didn't find Sinwar. Sinwar found them. He emerged suddenly in plain view, shot through grenades. IDF troops got wounded and took cover in a building where he continued to throw sticks, rocks and grenades while the IDF shelled the place from a distance. Then a tank and other troops arrived at the scene. At this point, Sinwar went up the second floor of the building where he was hiding, and a tank fired a shell at him. Sinwar was apparently wounded by the tank fire and lost his hand. After soldiers entered the building, he threw two grenades at them, and they rolled down the staircase. Soldiers retreated and used a drone to scan the building, Then the drone spotted a masked man with an injured hand. Sinwar saw the drone and threw a piece of wood at it. At this point, the tank fired another shell at him. In terms of this being like a, like a massive W for the Israeli military, of course, this is a very high profile target for them. This is the, the, the architect of October 7. This is uh, the person that is uh, the leader of the Al-Qassam Brigades. A lot of people actually were very upset about the Gilad Shalit uh, hostage uh, negotiation and the hostage swap where a thousand Palestinians that were imprisoned by the Israeli state were, were uh, uh, allowed to be released in, uh, for the return of one singular uh, Gilad Shalit. One of those people was uh, Yahya Sinwar. I've actually listen to, I believe his name is David Remnick, who even read his book and has talked about his background quite a bit. This, according to the IDF, is the moment a tank fired on the building Sinwar was holed up in. Hassan, looking back now, don't you think that it was Gaza's misfortune that Sinwar got released considering the state of Gaza now under his leadership? 
Well, considering prior to his release that Gaza wasn't exactly looking too great, and even after his release, Gaza isn't looking too great, and that the responsible party for Gaza's demise is always going to be the occupying state, the sovereign state of Israel. No, I don't think that his release, because I, I don't think that his release uh, plays a role in what Gaza looks like, considering that Israel has, has historically almost always occupied it and has controlled everyday existence in Gaza. I am not a personal believer that like October 7 is when uh, this history unfolded or history happened uh, and that the, there was nothing prior to that. And that's precisely the reason why many people will say that you cannot kill an idea. The people will always yearn for emancipation. Totally normal, totally understandable, totally human position to have. And uh, and that's precisely the reason why, for example, Hassan Nasrallah's uh, assassination by by Israel has not changed the dynamic uh, with uh, Hezbollah still very much fighting against uh, the Israeli incursion into Lebanon because it has nothing to do with the leadership unless you personally think that like these guys have the capacity to brainwash, you know, millions of people and are just like mind controlling them somehow into resisting against the state of Israel and that it's not coming out of a normal, very human place of wanting to not live under the ruthless, cruel, brutal military occupation of a settler colony, historically, that has dominated them, humiliated them, pushed them into a corner with no other way out. Um, that's the reason why I wanted to uh, look at uh, this, this Vice coverage from 2021, which is, uh, of course, prescient. Uh, considering the the way that, once again, Gaza looks in 2021, far before October 7. And uh, this is uh, one of the last Western interviews that, that Yahya Sinwar ever gave. But having said that, I think it'll help you uh, develop a deeper understanding of the, the experiences that Palestinians go through and where it stems from. And this is the Bizlash Brigade of soldiers who killed him operating in that area on the day this changes like not a lot uh in terms of uh the the way that israel is behaving either i disagree with this perspective because october 7th happened the death toll accelerated saying that sinwar's release was not unfortunate for them seems divided from the reality even though it's israel's doing the atrocities of october 7th form of resistance could have been viewed as an unfortunate miscalculation this way out that's being played out now seems worse especially if things go back to apartheid anyway I'm not Palestinian. I don't live in Gaza. I, I can't speak on, um, I guess, like the broader analysis beyond the fact that uh, I don't feel comfortable placing the blame of a uh, violent settler colony that has killed and displaced tens of millions of, of Palestinians. I don't, I, I don't feel like it's appropriate to lay the blame uh, in the hands of, of anyone that is resisting against their own brutal occupation. Like you can't, it's like saying the Warsaw prison, uh, the Warsaw ghetto uprising is responsible for the Holocaust. That's a ridiculous argument to make. It's not a correct argument to make. It is completely, it's antithetical to everything I believe, especially because you're hyper-focusing um, chatter. You're hyper-focusing on a singular person and not the broader concept of, of humiliating and destroying the lives of millions of people. And I think that it, you can't have that opinion unless you legitimately think it was the singular person that like mind controlled people into acting this way. Like, no, I think that it is a understandable position that people will have when their lives have been ruthlessly dominated by this settler colony. But Let's continue. Along with Sinwar's brother Mohammed, Khalil al Haya is a candidate for the next leader of Hamas. Today, thought to be in Qatar, eulogized Sinwar and ruled out an imminent release of hostages in Gaza. 101 hostages are still being held in Gaza, at least half of them thought to be still alive. Their friends and family took to the streets of Tel Aviv again today. Here in Israel, we don't celebrate the elimination of our enemies. We celebrate when our loved ones come back home. At Hostages Square, we met the cousin of Carmel Gatt. The occupational therapist was one of a group of six. By the way, this video bites the entire Israeli project in, in Gaza in the ass. They can use a drone to go into a building and easily find one quote unquote terrorist. And why the f are they dropping 2,000 bombs all over the place? 
Well, the thing is, they literally lucked into finding him, too. They didn't even kill him as, like, the high-profile target. I think it also further demonstrates the incompetence, even with the mother American military's surveillance tools at their disposal. Six hostages murdered in Gaza's tunnels back in August. DNA found at the scene indicated that Sinwar had also been in the area, possibly using Carmel and the others as human shields. Some people... Oh my god, come on, dog. Like, <laughs> bro, they killed him alone. Like, they killed him alone, and they're like, but he might have actually had hostages with him. It's like, dude, come... You can't f***ing package this up as a human shield narrative when, like, the f***ing drone footage contradicts that. What the f*** do you mean? That's crazy. <laughs> there were no human shields there, but I'm gonna imagine them being there anyway is a wild assessment to make. But I think it goes, uh, it goes to show, like, the attitude that a lot of people have about this stuff. They're just like, they would rather hallucinate a different reality than the one that they are even presenting to you immediately. And the government in Israel wants to go on fighting forever. And to keep on fighting, even though we eliminated Sinwar, even though we have a chance to get the hostages back. We need to focus on what's important, and most of the Israelis think exactly what I, what I think. They think that the most important thing is the hostages. And if we miss I don't, this chance, this... I don't fully agree with that. I don't think most of the Israelis... I mean, a lot of Israelis do want the hostages back. But I wouldn't say that most of the Israelis are not celebrating uh, Yahya Sinwar's death. Like, I don't agree with that. Most of Israeli society was, like, basically packed up when, uh, when, when Netanyahu threw a bone to the Lebanon invasion camp. Like, they literally... Stop the hostage conversations that were getting really heated inside of Israel. If you remember, like, I don't think this person is a bad person for the record, like, especially in comparison to like, uh, especially in comparison to, to, you know, how some in the Israeli society view this uh, entire situation. Um, I just I think it's a little bit naive on the other hand, um, especially when you see this kind of shit all the time. While celebrating death at Yahya Samar, Israelis at Mahana Yehuda Market in Jerusalem sing the new unofficial Israeli anthem, May Your Village Burn. <laughs> and meanwhile, he might be naive, but let me tell you something. There are plenty of overtly idiotic people especially in american media that immediately went oh well yaya sinwar is dead now i guess like israel can finally do a ceasefire and it's like no dog they haven't stopped bombing gaza so what happened surely surely they'll stop any moment now is is, is only a position you can arrive at if you are the dumbest rube of all time Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Sinwar's death doesn't mean the end of the war in Gaza. Oh, oh <laughs> never mind. Okay, well, there you have it. Let's pack this up, guys. Never mind. Hamas now confirms that their chief is dead. But a top negotiator for the group says hostages won't be returned until the war ends, Israel withdraws, and the Palestinian prisoners are released. Israel also warns that the war is not over. Today, evil has suffered a heavy blow, but the task before us is not yet complete. Hamas will no longer rule Gaza. This is the beginning of the day after Hamas. Um, I think we should start inside Gaza this hour. What's been the reaction there to the official confirmation by Hamas that Yahya Sinwar, the uh, political and military head of that group, has been killed? Let me begin with a little bit of context, Becky. It's important to remember that Hamas is not an elected government. There have been no elections in Gaza since 2006. That means Palestinians simply do not get a say in who rules them, including, of course, Yahya Sinwar, a very controversial figure, one who really struck fear in the hearts of many Gazans because of his reputation of taking out any potential enemies. Of course, he has supporters, but at a time like this, even critics of Yahya Sinwar are focused on the one major enemy, as Gazans see it, and that is Israel. You are now more than a year into this conflict. 
At least 42,000 people killed, nearly every single person displaced by this near constant bombardment and a ground incursion that continues, famine spreading, illness spreading, disease spreading throughout the Gaza Strip. So absolutely for Gazans, uh, their focus is the conflict with the Israeli military. And for them, the priority is not what are the political happenings within, the Hama within Hamas or who Israel kills, but quite simply just surviving, Becky, day by day. That is. Yeah, y'all are so primed to fucking yell at everybody on CNN that you're not hearing what she's saying. She's not wrong. She's 100% correct. She's like, nobody gives a fuck about Yahya Sinwar. Even the people that would not exactly be big fans of him are like, yeah, you know who the greater enemy is? The people that are blowing, the people that have blown up my fucking house and told me to relocate eight times and killed half of my goddamn family. Thank you very much indeed. I want to move on to uh, Gideon Levy now, who joins us. He's a columnist with Haaretz uh, okay. newspaper and served as advisor. What is going on on CNN, man? God damn. In the wake of Yahya Sinwar's uh, death, they got Gideon on? That's wild. They got my goat on. That's crazy. To the former Israeli uh, Prime Minister, Shimon Perez, it's good to have you, sir. Um, I've just been discussing with, with Salma what happens, you know, what, what's been the response in Gaza to the news, what, some 24 hours ago, that um, Simwa indeed had been killed by the IDF, and indeed what happens next. What's your assessment, sir? So first of all, I'm under the impression, if I can be emotional for a moment, I just spoke now with a friend in Gaza that I didn't speak the whole year, and I was sure he was dead. And he's alive. And he told me that there was... Yeah, he's bringing that up because he's saying Yahya is not the guy. He's like, make no mistake. My friend that I'm talking about in Gaza wasn't Yahya Sinwar. I know that you might have thought that that's what I was mentioning, but it's not him. It was quite a sense of happiness last night. He's in the, one of those rescue places in the Moasi, uh, in those tents uh, 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 facilities. And he says there was quite a sense of happiness last night hearing that Sinwa was assassinated, which doesn't mean that all the Palestinians uh, share the same, but there are people in Gaza who were, who were happy last night. The reason why people are celebrating, or at least his assessment is that people are celebrating, it's because they also, in many instances, perhaps with a, with a little bit of naivete, think that Israel is going to stop. Yeah, and that sentiment we have heard reflected from those that are um, Gazan um, freelancers and, 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 and staff. That's why he said it's not that these guys all hate him. It's that they think it's going to end the suffering. Uh, Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, has made a specific offer to uh, members of Hamas, saying that he will let them live if they uh, wave the white flag and they, they surrender the hostages they may be holding at this stage. Uh, again, the... the the problem or part of the problem is that so far Hamas are not giving any indication that they're willing to sort of play along. There's been a statement from a... Yeah, I, I, who? There's like one guy left and he's in Doha. What do you mean? And the other guy that was also in Doha was assassinated in Tehran by Israel. The, the dude... One of the most dangerous jobs in the world is not being American president, is being the principal negotiator with Israel on the Palestinian side in a hostage negotiation. Even if you've never held up a f gun ever in your life. Here's what Kamala Harris had to say about Yahya Sinwar. Today, Israel confirmed that Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, is dead. And justice has been served. As the California Attorney General of a border state, I prosecuted transnational gangs. And Hamas is perhaps the biggest transnational gang of all. Shipping fentanyl over the U.S. border. <laughs> She's like, oh no, I f***ed up my talking points. I meant something different. <laughs> I meant, I love my small businesses. My mother was a small business, and Yahya Sinwar is a small business owner. A terrorist attack that triggered a devastating war in Gaza, a war that has led to unconscionable suffering of many innocent... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the reason why Israel did a genocide, which we will not call a genocide. I mean, he was the reason. Hamas is the reason why Israel, in 1948... 
uh, did the Nakba because they knew that Hamas was coming. They're time travelers. Anyone that, that acts like this is about Hamas and Hamas is not simply used as a justification for whatever actions Israel wants to take, death and destruction in Gaza, is the funniest simpleton of all time. Every single Palestinian is quote unquote Hamas, both literally and figuratively. Every single Palestinian that doesn't want to f exist under a brutal Israeli apartheid occupation uh, that is currently conducting genocide is technically Hamas in the, in the in the sense that they are, you know, exhibiting the worst qualities of Hamas, which is not wanting to live under Israeli sovereignty. That's the part that actually uh, is frustrating to Israel. I'll give you an example. Saudi Arabia. It's not the Islamist fundamentalism that is a problem for Israel. Israel loves Saudi Arabia. So anyone that acts like this is an issue that uh, that revolves around like culture or anything like that is a fucking idiot. The reason why Hassan Nasrallah was assassinated by the state of Israel was not because he was a homophobe. It was not because of the militant actions in, uh, in, in Syria, like Hezbollah's military operations in Syria at the behest of Iran or whatever, right? It was none of those things. It was because he was the primary figure in Lebanon leading Hezbollah as a, as a force of resistance against Israeli violence. That's why they killed him. And the reason why a lot of these big bearded dudes are the, are the only game left in town is because Israel killed all of the secular, all of the Marxists, all of the Western focus guys anyway, and still continues to do so. On the night of the Hassan Nasrallah assassination in Lebanon, Israel simultaneously assassinated leaders of the DFLP and PFLP. Two groups that had nothing to do, nothing to do with Hezbollah. This is in Lebanon, okay? These are Palestinians living in Lebanon that are a part of the Marxist groups, uh, the, the Marxist parties in, in Palestine. They executed them in that same operation. Why? They weren't in charge of the Hezbollah uh, missile strikes. I thought the operation was uh, supposed to be limited to... Uh, stopping Hezbollah's command structure to allow Israelis to go back to northern Israel. Why did they kill the PFLP and DFLP guys? Why did they kill Ghassan Karafini years ago? Why have they so consistently destroyed every single Palestinian leadership? No matter whichever ideology they espouse, no matter whichever like uh, uh, you know religious background that they come from. Why? It's because... It has nothing to do with the, your worldview. It has nothing to do with or, or anything at all. It's just as long as you are someone who is existing under the brutal military occupation of Israel, as long as you are someone who wants to resist against Israeli violence, Israeli bloodshed, you are an enemy. As long as you don't sit back and die quietly. That's it. Kind of funny. Sorry. What is Trump's reaction? <laughs> Not a good person that's my reaction that's, that's sometimes what happens you know what's really funny about this like he doesn't even want to give this w to like the biden or kamala administration that's why it's like it's like one of those bobas where he's like it's great it's great that it happened but also he can't like lean into it too much because then that's like giving credit to his opponent <laughs> blue jean baby <laughs> playing in the background oh i'm just now finding out about this you're now telling me this for the first time <laughs> what can you say about Yahya Sinwar? He lived an amazing life. <laughs> You're just now telling me I've just found out. Yeah. She just died? Wow. I didn't know that. I just, uh, you're telling me now for the first time. She led an amazing life. What else can you say? She was an amazing woman. Whether you agreed or not, she was an amazing woman who led an amazing life. 